Hey guys, welcome to another video of Intuiting Studio. When you're building a software application or a service, I'm sure you've heard of these big words. Everyone talks about it. Scalability, maintainability, and reliability. Everyone just throws these words at each other without really knowing what individual terms actually mean. Today, we'll tackle what reliability really means in depth so you don't freeze when the interviewer asks you questions something like, so, how do you make a reliable application? Let's start by looking at some examples of unreliable services. Netflix not working when you want to watch a movie or a TV show. Uber not working correctly when you need to request a ride. Unreliable services yield bad user experience, and sometimes it can even lead to mad user experience as well. So, what are some typical expectations of reliable services? Here are some examples. Performs the function that the user expects tolerates the user making mistakes or using the software in unexpected ways, provide good performance under the expected load and data volume, prevents any unauthorized access or abuse. It basically means that the service or application should continue to work correctly, even when things go wrong. So, what can go wrong? The things that can go wrong are called faults, and there are mainly three different types of faults. Hardware faults, software faults, and human faults. Let's start with the hardware faults. We usually think of hardware faults as being random and independent from each other. One machine's disk failing does not imply that another machine's disk is going to fail. Here are different types of hardware faults. RAM can become faulty, someone can unplug the wrong network cable, and you can simply have a power grid blackout. Interesting fact, hard disks are reported as having a mean time to failure of about 10 to 50 years. Thus, on a storage cluster with 100,000 disks, we should expect on average 10 disks to die per day. Anyone who has worked with large data centers can tell you that these things happen all the time when you have a lot of machines. 100,000 disks are not that huge. Google uses up to tens of million servers to make everything work. So how do we cope with hardware faults? Our first response is usually to add redundancy to the individual hardware components in order to reduce the failure rate of the system. For instance, you can have RAID configuration for your disk, batteries and digital generator for backup power, dual power supplies, and half swappable CPU. This approach cannot completely prevent hardware faults from causing failures, but it definitely reduces the probability of failures. However, as the data volume have increased significantly, more applications have begun using larger number of machines, which proportionately increases the rate of hardware faults. Hence, the industry started using software fault tolerant techniques in preference or in addition to hardware redundancy. Let's look at the software faults next. Software faults are generally harder to anticipate and it can cause broader damage to the overall system or application because they are correlated across nodes. Here are different types of software faults. A software bug that causes by a particular bad input, cascading failures where a small fault in one component triggers a fault in another component, a software bug that corrupts shared resources, a service slows down for some reason and becomes unresponsive. Most of these bugs are created when programmers make some kind of assumptions about the software environment and it suddenly stops being true for some reason. So how do we cope with software faults? There's no quick solution to such a problem. Lots of small things can help. Carefully thinking about assumptions and interactions, thorough testing, process isolation, monitoring, and alerts. Next one is human faults. Human design, build, and operate software systems. Even when they have the best intentions, humans are known to be unreliable. For example, one study of a large internet services found that configuration errors by operators were the leading cause of outages. So, how do we cope with human faults? Only way to minimize human faults is to design systems in a way that minimizes opportunities for errors. For example, make APIs or admin interfaces easy to do the right thing and discourage the wrong thing. Test thoroughly at all levels so even in case of human errors, we can detect it before the error goes out to production. Allow quick and easy recovery from human errors and automate manual work as much as possible. Alright, we explore all three different types of faults. I want to mention one more thing before we end. Many critical bugs happen due to poor error handling. 
in order to increase confidence that faults will be handled correctly when they occur naturally, many companies started to deliberately induce faults to ensure that the fault tolerance machinery is continually exercised and tested. Chaos Monkey is from Netflix and it is an example of this approach. We're done! I hope you understand what reliability means now. It is not an easy concept. Make sure you rewatch the video and take notes. Make it yours. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers.